What is going on guys and girls? Welcome back to TV and me. I'm of course Kevin and it's time for The Walking Dead. So we've officially had our first Walking Dead weekend and as promised I said if I found some extra time I would also record a Wednesday episode and alas it is Wednesday I found some extra time and uh We've got more Walking Dead to watch. Without further ado though, let's get into this recap. And um, not really much happened in the last episode. It was actually quite a slower episode, but I still enjoyed it. There were a lot of cool moments in it. Um, specifically, the relationship between Carl and Michonne. In that episode, we saw that Michonne started to open up to Carl. And in fact, she opened up to us as an audience. We finally learned a bit about her history. She told Carl about the fact that, you know... She had a son, even though she's not revealed yet how he died. The fact she's opening up about that is really good to see. And I think that her opening up to Carl isn't only good for Michonne. I think it will also be good for Carl. Because we know Carl, we know he's been bottling things up. And we even saw when his dad was unconscious. He let rip at his dad, you know, he said all the things he's wanted to say. Even though they were nasty, you know, they were just stuff he had to release. And he's been like a volcano and I feel like he still is. He's just let off a bit of steam. So I think the fact Michonne is trusting Carl with these, you know, stories of her past, this may in turn make Carl open up to Michonne, which I feel like can only be a benefit to his character because again it will release some of the pressure he's holding and some of the, you know, some of the anger that he's got to possibly have, you know, with everything that's gone on. And I think that will help release that in Carl. You know, he can now open up to Michonne because she's opened up to him and they've got this mutual trust, which, like I say, can only benefit both characters. I just really hope now, though, that they don't get too close and something bad happens to the other one because I feel they're both Michonne and Carl are carrying so much baggage and so much upset and torment. And, you know, I feel like if something bad was to happen to Michonne, Cole would react really badly. And if something bad was to happen to Carl, not only Rick, but Michonne would act badly to that as well. Because she's finally trusted in someone. She's finally talking to someone. But apart from that budding relationship between Michonne and Carl, we also saw Rick. Um, Rick was stuck at the house because of his injury. You know, he was left behind while they went out on a supply run. Um, some bad guys raided the house. Luckily, as Laura said, one of my patrons, thank you for this, Laura, because you're 100% correct. Rick turned out to be the hide-and-seek world champion. Um, <laughs> even though he hid in the most obvious place possible under the bed. You know, he managed to get away. And he was seen at one point, actually, by that guy who was choked out. But... Luckily, he was choked out, he went unconscious, and the other guy went on the bed and fell asleep. So he was able to escape, he got to the toilet, and bumped into another bad guy, who was um, sitting on the toilet, still in his trousers. So, he obviously wasn't going to the toilet, so maybe he was just sitting there relaxing, but uh, it's probably good he wasn't going to the toilet, because if he'd got into a fight with Rip with his trousers around his ankles, that would have been, that would have been interesting to see how they shot that scene, but... Uh, he got out of that situation as well. He also benefited from it as well because he actually got a gun out of the whole thing. So he came out of that situation with a gun. He lost the house, but, you know, the group were on the move again. He managed to meet with Carl and Michonne before they entered the house. And uh, they all got away and ended up actually at the train tracks. The same train tracks that I believe Tyrese, Carol and uh, Mika and Lizzie are on heading towards that town called Terminus or that sanctuary called Terminus, and, um, you know, maybe they'll bump into each other later down the road, or maybe they won't meet each other until they arrive at this so-called sanctuary. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. Also, last episode, of course, we ran into three new characters in Abraham, Eugene, and Rosita. Um, they seem like good people. I'm quite enjoying what I saw of them so far. Um, I'm still not 100% sure of their intentions at this point. I mean, we know what they said they were doing. They're heading to Washington because apparently Eugene has some knowledge of the Walker virus. Um, whether that's true, whether that's just a ploy, or whether that's them kidding themselves that they have this mission in order to give them a self, themselves a purpose to survive, I don't know at this point. But uh, they seem like good people. They seem trustworthy. And I feel like I can trust them. Because we even saw. Because they're with Tyra and Glenn. They gave Glenn a weapon. So they're not obviously people that are keeping Glenn at a distance. You know. They're not mistrusting people. So you know. Like I say. I do trust them. They're working with Glenn now. Because of course Glenn has gone off to try and find Maggie. And Tyra's sticking by his side. Which is really cool to see. Because she feels some sort of guilt towards you know the fact that she was on the bad side that attacked the prison she feels like she has something she owes towards Glenn and uh, she's sticking with him Rosita uh, Abraham and Eugene all went with Glenn as well because their truck is broke down after Eugene shot it to shit 
because he can't shoot a gun. But, uh, you know, they're all together. They're a group. Hopefully good things come out of that. I hope nothing bad happens. And uh, we'll see where they end up. But that was about it for that episode. So let's get straight into the next one. This is Season 4, Episode 12. Oh, there goes Din Din's. And he missed. Smart. Oh, there's some more Din Din's. That was a real snake. I think it might have been. I need a drink. No, I mean a real drink. Is in alcohol. I thought we could go find some. Okay. Well, enjoy your snake jerky. This is why you can't drink alcohol. Unless you're somewhere safe. Drinking alcohol in bushes while you're surrounded by walkers ain't a good idea. Nope, that one can smell you, love. Apparently, he can't smell you. I'm not staying in the suck ass camp! Hey! You had your fun. What the hell is wrong with you? Do you feel anything? So you want to spend the rest of our lives staring into a fire and eating mud snakes? Screw that! We might as well do something! I can take care of myself, and I'm gonna get a damn drink. Do so you think Why that's gonna do something? Because he wants to burn it for fire, because it's pretty useless now. No, we all know what happened to Herschel. Do not step over dead bodies, fuck's sake. Someone else is going to get bit like that in this series, I guarantee it. Probably not now, but at some point. Why is he trying to rob money? Unless he's just using it to burn. I really don't think white is the best colour for the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, white isn't the best colour for the zombie apocalypse. I know you think this is stupid. And it probably is. But I don't care. All I wanted to do today was lay down and crap, but we don't get to do that. So beat up on walkers if that makes you feel better. Peach schnapps. Is it good? No. Well, yeah. it's the only thing left. I don't think peach snaps is a Daryl's type of drink. I see him more as a beer man. Or even some moonshine. <laughs> Daryl's really not one to offer a cuddle, is he? So... find you a better drink. 
I was expecting a liquor store. No, this is better. Speaking of moonshine, oh, <laughs> fucking called it. Moonshine. See, I knew I knew who Daryl was. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. <laughs> Second round's better. <laughs> I'll slow down. This one's for you. Nah, I'm good. Why? Someone's gonna stay like keep watch. Mm -hmm. So what? You're like my chaperone now. Uh, just drink lots of water. Yes, Mr. Dixon. My dad had a place just like this. You got your dumpster chair. It's for sitting in. And your drawers all summer drinking. You got your fancy buckets. It's for spitting chaw in. You got your your internet. If we're gonna be trapped again, we might as well make the best of it. Unless you're too busy chaperoning, Mr. Dixon. Well, might as well make the best of it. I say something I've never done. And if you have done it, you drink. And if you haven't, I drink. Then we switch. I've never shot a crossbow. Ain't much of a game. That was a warm-up. I've never been out of Georgia. Really? OK. Good one. I've never been drunk and did something I regret it. I know a lot of things. I've never been in jail. I mean, as a prisoner. I see what she's trying to do. So what you think of me? I didn't mean anything serious. I just thought, you know, like the drunk tank. Drink up. Wait, were you a prison guard before? No. Oh, wait, it's my turn, right? I never, uh, never eaten frozen yogurt. Never had a pet pony. Never got nothing from Santa Claus. Never relied on anyone for protection before. I don't think I've ever relied on anyone for anything. I sure as hell never cut my wrist looking for attention. Just shut up. Have you never shot a crossbow before? I'm gonna teach you right now. Come on. Oh, for fuck's sake. Stop it, Daryl! Come here. Eight ball. <laughs> What the hell you do that for? It was having fun. No, you were being a jackass. What do you want from me, girl? I want huh? you to stop acting like you don't give a crap about anything. Like nothing we went through matters. Like none of the people we lost meant anything to you. Governor rolled right up to our gates. Maybe if I wouldn't have stopped looking. Maybe because I gave up. That's on me. Daryl. <laughs> Your dad. Maybe, maybe I could have done something. You want to know where I was before all this? I was just drifting around with Marl, doing whatever he said we were going to be doing that day. Some redneck asshole with an even bigger asshole for a brother. I miss Maggie. I miss her bossing me around. <laughs> I thought... Maggie and Glenn would have a baby. And he'd get to be a grandpa. And he'd get really old. And it'd happen, but... It'd be quiet. He'd be surrounded by people he loved. That's how unbelievably stupid I am. <laughs> I wish I could just change. You did. Not enough. Not like you. It's like... You were made for how things are now. I'm just used to this. Things being ugly, growing up in a place like this. You're gonna be the last man standing. You're gonna miss me so bad when I'm gone to hell, Dixon. You gotta stay who you are. Not who you were. Places like this, you have to put it away. Or it kills you. We should go inside. We should burn it down. So she's a drunk arsonist. We're gonna need more booze. Let's get rid of the useless money. There goes your past boy. Ever since we 
Why does she look so awkward doing that? <laughs> Salute the house. There we have it, episode 12, and uh, I've joked about it in the past, but I think this may officially become my quickest or shortest review I ever do, mainly because this episode didn't really have that much going on, it was very slow, but despite that, I have to say I really, really enjoyed that last 10-20 minutes. The build up to that was incredibly slow, not much happened, but when they finally reached that house, they finally t sat down and talked with one another, you know, and we learnt about a bit about Daryl's past and we learnt a bit about Beth. It actually got really interesting and it was really cool seeing those two sort of begin to connect. I mean, they've been with each other before, we've seen them talking, you know, and we've seen them connect to some degree, but in this episode, I feel like they really got to know one another. It started off, of course, with that silly drinking game, which I'm sure we've all done in our past, and... You know, Beth hit a really raw nerve with Daryl saying that has he ever been in prison. I feel like Daryl got angry at that because he almost carries it like a badge of honour that he hasn't. I mean, I guess he's telling the truth and that he hasn't been in prison. And if that is the case, I feel like someone like Daryl or his character would carry that as a badge of honour because of the family is from, because of the terrible upbringing he had and the fact he's never been to prison maybe he wears that as a badge of honor and for someone to accuse him of that and assume that about him really upsets him but um as soon as she said that he went off the deep end he started saying all this mean stuff you know he started acting like the daryl of old that we saw in maybe the beginning of season two you know when he'd sort of lash out at people because they said something he didn't agree with but, uh, I mean, with everything that's gone on, it's not surprising he's, like, reverted back, or he did revert back to the character he was before. Someone who was very defensive, you know, and was used to being the bad guy, and used to being alone. And I feel like he lashed out in that moment, because she hurt his feelings by assuming that about him, because she, he had protected her, or helped her survive up to that point. She has helped protect him as well, she's helped him survive, but he's done the same for her. And I feel like she sort of insulted him with that, saying that he'd been to prison you know he took it that way even though she was just trying to find out about his past um he took it the wrong way he lashed out and unfortunately he said some really mean things but amid that big anger outburst we did see him break down you know we saw that he carries guilt as well he carries guilt in the fact that he wasn't able to save her so he feels like he should have done something and that again maybe reverts back to when him and Cole were at the fence you know Cole said he had a shot at the governor and Daryl said to him don't do anything wait on Rick wait on Rick's word trust your father and maybe I'd hate to say it, but maybe Daryl blames Rick in a way as well I mean this is just speculation like I say but you know he's carrying some guilt that he never did anything and it came out in this episode and we also still is saw in this episode that he's also carrying that luggage from his past still you know that horrible upbringing he obviously had the neglect the lack of love you know always following his brother about in these terrible situations and you know fearing for his life and just not feeling good enough basically and um the way beth in this episode sort of opened him up you know showed him some faith told him that he doesn't have to be that person that he was in the past he can be the good guy because we've seen the good guy in Daryl time and time again. I feel she was trying to stop him from, like I say, reverting back to old Daryl. She's trying to bring him back to who he was in the prison. You know, that leader, that good guy, that proactive man, the one that looked out for people and cared. And uh, I think she was successful. She told him to burn down the house, burn away his problems, burn away his history. And, uh, you know, no one was hurt. The house burnt down. And hopefully, hopefully now, Daryl is back to the man we grew to love in season three. And, you know, through the beginning of the season four. The man that is Rick's right-hand man. The man that can lead when he's not there. The man that can make decisions. And the man that, you know, everybody can look up to. But like I say, that is about it. An episode all about Daryl and Beth. And that final 20 minutes again, I absolutely loved. I really did like those final 20 minutes because it's made me care for Beth more and it's made me care and understand Daryl more you know 
it's obvious that you know these are two interesting characters and i'm so thankful i mean we've discussed it before but i'm so thankful that they've actually finally explored beth and she's just not that character in the background looking after judith now i feel like i'm really starting to understand her as a character you know i'm starting to care for her i'm, I'm loving the relationship she has with daryl and i think those two have a really strong bond um i just <sighs> At this point, I hope nothing romantic comes out of it, though, because she's a bit young. I don't see it being like that. I feel like she looks up to Daryl. She doesn't see him like that. But, you know, there were some questions in my head when she seemed like she was trying to get him drunk. But I think that was just more to open him up, you know, because he's always so closed off, Daryl. And I, and I guess she thought that the alcohol would open him up. And I don't think she was just doing the alcohol thing for that either. I think she was doing it for herself in terms of, you know, Beth is a teenager. She's never lived the teenager life properly because when she was probably going to start experimenting with drinkers and teenager you know you know doing things that teenagers do this whole thing went down and she was never able to do that so i feel like in this episode that was also her trying to live her teenage years you know try and just once let her hair down even though it probably isn't wise considering the walker apocalypse and they're not somewhere safe but Daryl sealed off the building, you know, it was safe to a degree, and he was watching over, he was trying to be sensible, and, uh, you know, nothing bad happened, so it all worked out well in the end. But let's leave that there, I'm actually really looking forward to getting into the next episode now, because I feel like this was a really chill episode, um, the next episode of course will be at the weekend, at the Walking Dead weekend, so I guess I'll catch you on Saturday and Sunday, and until then, bye bye. Thank you for watching Season 4, Episode 12 of The Walking Dead with me. If you enjoyed this video, as usual, leave a thumbs up because it helps me and it helps the channel grow. Remember, if you've got any thoughts or theories about the episode, you can stick them in the comments section below. But please, no spoilers. Also, if you want to support me even more than you do now, you can find me on Patreon and you can support me for as little as $1 a month. The link is in the description of this video. And finally, if you want to keep up to date with the channel, you can follow me on Twitter at TV and me reacts, or you can subscribe.